Hey kids, it's Mr. Fly here, hope you're well. Now, I know from the comments that I get on my videos that a number of you watching are new to riding, just getting into biking, just starting out. If that's the case, if that's you, this video is gonna be of particular interest because in this film, I'm gonna tell you the top five mistakes that I see new motorcyclists make. Okay, so if you're not new to motorcycling, feel free to skip this video. On the other hand, if you do watch it and you spot anything that you think I've missed, feel free to stick them in the comments below. It might be of uh, some use to uh, other viewers of the channel. Alrighty, without further ado, let's crack on with the top five mistakes that I see new motorcyclists make. Okay, so to number five on my list, and these are in no particular order, by the way. The first thing I wanted to mention was uh, the error of riding too fast, too soon on a motorcycle before you've learnt to ride properly. Even motorcycles like this, my trusty Royal Enfield, which is relatively low powered, uh, will out accelerate most cars on the road. And it's uh, one of the uh, attractions of getting a motorcycle. Trouble is, of course, there are laws uh, against riding too quickly, and that's what we have speed limits for. Now, as I say, riding a motorcycle is inherently dangerous compared to, say, driving in a car, where we do at least have a metal cage around us to protect us. And let's face it, the consequences of having an off on a motorcycle are often much worse than the consequences of having a bit of a bump in a car. So my advice to uh, new riders is just to try and rein in that enthusiasm a little bit to start with. Just be cognizant of the fact that you are a new rider. It takes six months to a year, I would say, of regular riding just to build up that little experience pot. You will get some thrills and spills on the way and you'll learn what you can and can't do on a motorcycle. And if you do that in a safe, slower manner, uh, then you won't become one of those terrible statistics. All right, on to the next mistake that I see uh, new motorcyclists make. Okay, so to the next mistake that I see new riders making, and that is that they don't practice braking uh, often enough. Now, when I uh, was taught to ride, uh, I actually got taught to um, brake hard and, and do exercise in braking. I'm sure it would probably be the same for you if you're learning as well. But even once you've passed your test and you've got your full license, it's well worth keep doing that. Every now and then, every, say, I don't know, fifth ride, go out and just try your brakes. Try braking progressively, soft and hard. Just get a feel for when the ABS kicks in. Get a feel for what it's like to brake in different weather conditions. Um, don't forget things like weather conditions, the condition of your tyres and so on, do make a difference and indeed what bike you're on if you ride different bikes. They all brake slightly differently. Get a good feel for how your brakes work, particularly uh, under hard braking conditions. Uh, and in that way, if you do have to have an emergency braking situation, uh, it'll already be in muscle memory and hopefully you won't have an off. So uh, that's the next uh, mistake that I see uh, new motorcycles was making. Not practising braking enough. Make that part of your regular regime. Okay, so to the next uh, error that I see uh, new riders making sometimes, and that is uh, not wearing or buying uh, appropriate kit. Maybe scrimping and scraping, going cheap, trying to get away with maybe just wearing your normal riding jeans uh, and perhaps not wearing proper riding boots, things like that. I never do that. I'm what's called an at-gap person. All the gear, all the time. I always make sure I'm wearing proper riding gear with proper protection in the, uh, in the elbows, proper abrasion protection, etc. Uh, and I suggest you do too. There's all sorts of kit available. There's lots of reviews on my channel of kit. Uh, and all this stuff is specifically designed to literally save your skin. Now, when you're looking at buying kit, it uh, is a bit of a minefield out there. What I would say is make sure it conforms to the latest CE or whatever your local standards are. And uh, lucky for me, uh, one of the subscribers and regular viewers to the channel is uh, the man that's known as Mr. CE, none other than Paul Varnessy. And I asked him uh, for a quick word of advice for what you should look for when you're buying new kit. Now, I wrote down uh, what Paul said so I could get this exactly right. And uh, what he said was genuine approved kit will not uh, only feature the official pictogram and CE mark, uh, which won't be affected by Brexit, by the way, uh, but will be accompanied by the UK CA mark two years after we uh, leave the EU, if you're in the UK. By law, it must also be accompanied by instructions for use, stating, amongst other details, uh, where it was tested, which certification body has approved it, and providing a copy of the legal declaration of conformity. Uh, Paul goes on to say, uh, alternatively, that can be provided on the manufacturer's website. Um, here's a typical example of one of RST's de uh, declarations. He sent me the link here, um, and uh, I'll put the link below so you can have a look at that. This is from RST. Uh, both novice and experienced riders might, al might also find the star ratings pro provided by the Australasian Motocap website extremely useful. Motocap sends out secret shoppers to buy jackets, trousers and gloves from retailers and then test them for safety and for comfort before giving them between zero and five stars. The scheme has reported on over 200 items at the time that I'm recording this uh, and uh, many of which uh, are available globally and it won an FIM award last year in recognition of its contribution to motorcycling. Oh, sorry, it won the FIM award in recognition of its contribution to motorcycling. You get the, you get the picture. So well worth a look if an independent scientific appraisal would help you with uh, making your decision on what to buy. Uh, so again, I'll stick a link below to the uh, motorcap.com.au website below so you can check that out as well. So thank you very much indeed, Paul, for your input on that one. Hopefully that's of use. 
Okay, just to finish out this section, what I would say is don't be tempted to buy cheap looking uh, biking kit off of eBay because you definitely don't know whether that's passed uh, the proper uh, rigorous testing that you get with the stuff that's got the proper marks on it. Uh, you can get all sorts of kit at all sorts of prices and you don't necessarily know uh, what sort of riding gonna, you're going to do. So I would recommend going with one of the value band brands to start with. I'm a big fan of kit from uh, the likes of Oxford and RST. They both make uh, great kit. Loads of reviews on my channel if you look through my reviews uh, playlist. I'll put a link somewhere in the corner here. Uh, go and check those out you can buy those for not too much money they've got all the proper protection uh, and then you'll understand the sort of riding you want to do uh, so in the future you can maybe splash out on some of this sort of uh, bigger value brand stuff okay so to number two on my top five uh, list of the mistakes that i see in new motorcyclists make and number two on my list is uh, simply this buying too powerful a motorcycle to start with uh, now of course uh, when you get into motorcycle you get very excited about the sort of bike that you maybe want to buy in the future and we all have dream bikes i'm very lucky this uh, ducati panigale is my dream bike and i own it so how fortunate am i but frankly these sorts of bikes can wait these are not bikes for beginners uh, in my opinion uh, a great bike to start with is something in the sort of power region of 50 to 75 brake horsepower with that sort of power, you can have plenty of fun uh, and you're still safe on the road. You've got ample power to overtake. Once you start getting into these 150 brake horsepower plus motorcycles, you are asking for trouble. You may not get to see your second bike. So a question I get asked a lot is what bike should I get for my first big bike? I made a video on this whole subject. Again, I'll put a link in the corner if I can or down below in the description if I, if I can't do that. And, uh, and that gives you more detail. But in a nutshell, what I would say is buy something around about the 600cc 50 to 75 brake horsepower league. Learn your craft for six months. Buy a second hand one uh, and then what you can do is sell it at the end of that six month period. You can probably sell it for pretty much the same as you bought it with and then you can buy your dream bike or maybe make the dream bike the one after that. But uh, gradually step up and that way you'll uh, have a long and happy motorcycling life. So that's uh, number two on my list, of the top five uh, mistakes that I see new motorcyclists uh, make and that is buying too big and powerful a bike to start with. So number one on my list of the uh, mistakes that I see new riders making then is to do with these things, crash helmets. Now I've got a collection of these things, I absolutely love them. I've got more of these than I have handbags and shoes, they're brilliant. Um, but one of the most important things to know about helmets when you're buying your first one is that it really has to fit properly. That's much more important than having uh, you know, a fancy brand name or a really expensive helmet is how it fits. So what I would recommend is don't go on the internet and just buy the cheapest helmet you can find, but get down to your local bike dealer, talk to the experts there and get them to properly fit the helmet for you. You've got to look properly hamster cheeked when you're in it. Uh, that way, uh, once you get to know the brands that do fit you properly, once you get more experience, then maybe you can buy, um, look for the good bargains on the internet. But in the first instance, definitely go and get one fitted properly. That I think is the biggest mistake that new riders make, getting an ill-fitting helmet. Okay, so I said that there was a uh, top five mistakes that I see beginner motorcyclists making, but there's another one that I just wanted to mention at the end here as well, a sort of a bonus sixth one, if you like. And that mistake is not taking further rider training once you've uh, passed your test. Now you can do things like uh, go out with your instructor on a motorway to get some experience on, with that, or indeed do your advanced uh, riding test. Uh, that's all well and good, won't do you any harm, uh, but maybe aren't so much fun, I would wager. What I'm talking about here is doing things like a track day uh, or doing a bit of off-road riding. Now it doesn't, you don't have to be a track day god, and you don't have to be be an off-road god. I'm neither of those things, but I have done track days and I have done off-road riding. It just makes your road riding that much better, makes you a safer rider, and it's great fun to do as well. So uh, once you've passed your test, I would highly, highly recommend getting yourself booked on a track day and doing some off-road training. It will absolutely enhance your riding. Okay, so there we have it. Those are the top mistakes that uh, I often see uh, new motorcyclists make. I'm no great expert on this, but I was a new motorcyclist myself once too, and I've managed to uh, get this far. So I do implore you uh, to give those things some thought. If you're an old hand motorcyclist and there are some key things you think I've missed out, then as I say, please do stick them in the comments below because it could be of uh, some help to our fellow new riders. All right, that's it for this time. If you haven't done so already, do think about hitting that subscribe button and that way I can see you in the next video. All right, look forward to speaking to you again soon. Until then, this has been The Missing and Fly. Cheerio. Yeah. Or top five mistakes. Let's do that all again. Okay, so to number five on my list, and by the way, these are in no particular order, they're just the top five things that I think you should know. First thing uh, on my list, or number five, let's do that all again, I got that completely wrong to say a car and they'll out accelerate most things on the road uh, so uh... oh gosh let's do that again okay so to the first thing in uh, my top five list of the five mistakes that uh... let's do that again oh okay so to number five in my top five list of the motorcycle of the 
if you take it a little bit easy, you won't become one of those statistics, uh, of one of those um, nasty statistics. Oh, I've really messed that up again. Bother! Okay, the next mistake that I see uh, new riders making is, uh, and this may be a bit of a, let's do that again. Lucky for me, one of the subscribers of the Mr. Flannel, uh, Flannel, <laughs> let's do that all again, shall we? It's very important that you get a helmet, a helmet that fits properly. Let's do it all again. But they're not a great deal of fun. Um, got something in my eye now, annoying. Let's do it again. Bugger.